Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. In today's demo, we are going to learn about the Digital Signatures API. For this demo, I'm going to use the PSPDF Kit API. The PSPDF Kit API is easy to integrate and we are going to integrate it with Power Apps and Power Automate in the course of this tutorial series. In fact, this API is used to effortlessly manage document signing, ensure compliance, legal standards, etc. Now, that being said, PSPDF Kit API is also SOC2 compliant. It is trusted e-signature. That means a document that is digitally signed using this API will be able to validate in Adobe and has enforcement of signatures under the US and the Canadian law. The pricing is transparent. It, this is not a free service. Digital signing cannot be a free service. If you have a digital signing API, which is free, that means it's not legit. So this is the pricing page. Have a look at the pricing page. Look at the frequently asked questions before you proceed with this demo. So that being said, if I go back to the digital signing API, the most importantly out here, you see that there is a curl sample. Now you'll say, Clement, this is a curl sample. However, in Power Automate, we need an HTTP sample. Yes, you are right. We are going to transform the curl sample into an HTTP sample. I'll explain you every bit of it. So before we start a demo, I have a site out here which is a communication site and I have a document library. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into make.powerautomate.com and try to create a flow. So the flow will be very simple. I'm going to click on new, I'm going to click on instant flow. Uh, I'll skip this. I want to trigger the flow manually. So that being said, I'm going to use the SharePoint. I'm going to use for the selected file. I'll give it a site name. I'll give it a library name. Next, what I want to do, I want to go ahead and do an HTTP call. I want to call the API such that I can pass the document, sign it, and get it back. Not this HTTP. I want to use the HTTP action. So not the SharePoint HTTP, rather this HTTP action. To this action, we need to pass in some parameters. So before we go ahead, let's look at the example of the digital signature side by side. Okay, we can give it the URL. So that's pretty straightforward. I can use the method. Next is the header. So I can give it the header, which is authorization. And to that, I need to pass in the bearer and the API key. Where will you get the API key? Once you sign up to the service, you can get the API key out here. That's perfect. But next, where there is a confusion. Here, I need to pass in a body, but this body is in the form of a multi-part form data. So before we proceed, let's copy this. Let's go into Postman. Let's add a new, let's paste it out here. And that will go ahead and create headers for me. If you see it created headers, this is the one that we added, even in our HTTP. And to this, I can pass in a file. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go into the headers and change the bearer token. So I have changed the bearer token with an actual API key. We'll change it with your API key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this a document and I'm going to send it. Perfect, it gave me 200 response, which is awesome. I can actually go ahead and save this file and let me quickly open this file in Adobe. So if you see, there's a signature panel and the signature is valid and it shows me that it has been signed. However, there is no image or any reference of the signature in the document. In the further tutorials, we are going to go ahead and add a signature that is, we'll add some image, we'll add the company logo and also the user metadata to the signature. But however, if you see, this signature is valid. So this document is valid. That being said, we want to transform this request into HTTP request. So to do that, I'm going to go back into my Power Automate and I'm going to pass in a sample body. So my sample body would look like this. 
And if you see, I have just passed in the parameters out here, which are the default parameters. We'll go in details about these parameters and what are they. However, if you see, we included, this is a multi-part. So every part has got its own headers and has got its own body. So before we go ahead and before I go ahead and explain this multi-part, I'll actually pass in the body. What it needs in the body is the file content. So what I'll do is I'll say get file properties. I'll give it a site address and a library name and an ID, which is the output of the action above it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get file content and I'll pass it the site URL and I'll pass it the identifier. The identifier is the output of the get file content action. And here I'm going to pass in the get file content. If you see, there's a white space here. So I'll just remove the white space and our HTTP request now is valid. So this is the valid HTTP request. I'm going to pass this HTTP request in the video description below as well. All I need to do right now is change the API key. But before we go ahead, let's try to understand this HTTP request that I created. I already explained you how the authorization came in and how the post came in. The next part is the multi-part. So as I told you previously, every multi-part has its own headers. And the content disposition field is very important. The content disposition field in this case tells you that uh, this request is in the form of form data. It needs a file the file and the file name and the content type is application pdf and then i'm passing the file content out here the next part again there is a header and to this body i'm telling how the signing request or how the signing should look like the body in the first part contains a binary data as you see and in the second part it's the data payload, which includes the signature type. We'll talk about this in the next tutorial. And finally, it tells you that the content type is multi-part form. Next, what I want to do, I want to send this over an email. So I'm going to say send an email v2. I'll just send it to Alex. Just give it a meaningful subject. Copy the same in the body. Say switch to advanced mode. I'll add an attachment. So I can just give it a meaningful name. So let's give it something meaningful. So I'll say base64 to string. And I'll go ahead and pass in the username. And I'll just say signed.pdf. I can also give it a file name out here. So let me add the file name as well. I'll do this and I can get rid of the dot PDF. So it tells me that ah, uh, it tells me that it's an invalid expression. I know why. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it simple. I'll just say add out here and I'll paste the next part in here. This should get rid of the error. I can save it. I'm going to go ahead and upload a document. So the document has been uploaded. I'll quickly try to trigger it from Power Automate. I should have given it a good name, so I'll just give it a better name. So I'll say Digital Signature Basic. And I'll say this is part one of the tutorial series. In the next parts, we will be understanding more about this API. So I'll say Save. Let me refresh. Let's go back and digital signatures part one. But if I run it now, it will give me an error. I need to go ahead and replace the bearer token. So I'll pause the video, replace it, and then trigger it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again try to trigger it, this time with the updated bearer token or the API key. So I'll say continue and I'll say run. So the flow has triggered. If I go back, it's running and my flow has completed successfully. If I go back into Outlook, I see that a document has been received. Okay, it, if I go ahead and try to download it, I have a problem out here. It gives me saying that the file name is not correct. So I'll fix that in a bit real quick. 
I'll go here, send an email. Yes, this is wrong. So I need to pass it like this. I can save it. I can trigger it from the previous run, which is like 58 seconds ago. Okay, the new email has arrived. This time it looks good. I can download it. I can try to open it. It failed. It failed because of what? Because I did not pass in the attachment content. So I'll pass in the body. This is very important. Now you're seeing real troubleshooting out here and you'll say, Clavin, you did miss many things. But it's good because now you know that I'm also a human, so I can do mistakes. Perfect, so this time this is good. I can download the file and say open. And I can see this. And here, my friends, we have a document that is valid and digitally signed. If somebody tries to go ahead and edit the document, it tells that the document has been signed and cannot be edited. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, do drop it in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer them. Have a great day.